Hi everyone, welcome to Virtual History 360. I'm Mr. Wade and today we're going to talk about Jacksonian democracy. Wow, this is a crazy time in US history, so let's dig right in. Where to start though? Hmm. How about the election of 1824? Remember, during this time there was really only one political party in the country, the Democratic Republicans. Because of this, four candidates from the same party emerged to compete for the presidency. Officially, the party chose William Crawford, but different regions supported other candidates that reflected their own interests. Because of the split, no person received a majority of electoral votes. Andrew Jackson had the plurality, meaning he had the most votes, but not quite enough. When this happens, the House of Representatives decides the winner. Now, these guys didn't necessarily agree on most topics, but there's one thing that did bring them together, and that's that they didn't want Andrew Jackson to be president. Henry Clay, who finished in a distant fourth during the election, agreed to use his influence as Speaker of the House to defeat Jackson. So the House chooses John Quincy Adams, and Adams becomes the first of five presidents to win the office while losing the popular vote. Let's take a look. You see, Quincy Adams lost the popular election by 38,149 votes. But again, there was more to come. Like Rutherford B. Hayes, he lost the popular election by 252,666 votes. Then we have Benjamin Harrison, he lost the popular election by 94,530 votes. You may think that's all in the past, but in recent years, George W. Bush lost the popular election by 543,816 votes. Even in the 2016 election, Donald Trump lost the popular election by 2,864,974 votes. That's quite a lot. But let's go back to Adams. Here's the thing. Right after this happens, Adams names Clay to be the Secretary of State. Now this sends up a bunch of red flags, and people who voted for Jackson started calling this a corrupt bargain. You know, they worked out an agreement to get the presidency. They say this is how Adams stole the election. But enough about Adams for now. Let's fast forward to the election of 1828. This is the first election where the candidates actively campaigned. Before this, it was actually looked down upon, it was frowned upon the campaign. But in the election of 1828, more people were allowed to vote. Now, you see, before this, it used to be you had to be a white male who owned land in order to vote. Now the property requirement was gone, and you just had to be a white male in most cases. So the candidates held rallies and passed out buttons, you know, really trumped up a bunch of stuff. Stuff that is commonplace today. You know, think about the conventions you see on TV. I wish I could tell you that they only debated the issues, but it quickly escalated to insults to each other and their families. This is called mudslinging, and it was used to make your opponent look bad. Unfortunately, it still happens today. Despite the attacks on his reputation, though, and the attacks on his wife's reputation, Jackson won in a landslide. Let's head to Washington and check out the White House. Here we are on Constitution Avenue. Take a look around. Do you see the fence that surrounds the building? Do you see the Secret Service agents up on the roof? I know they're kind of small from this distance, but do you see them? You know, it wasn't always this secure. Check out this painting of Jackson's inauguration. People flooded the lawn. They were free to come and go as they pleased. They even went into the White House, hoping to shake hands with Jackson. See, this was his appeal. He was the champion of the common man. You know, from a log cabin all the way to the White House. People said they could relate to him. And because of this, Jackson rode this wave all the way to the presidency. Jackson promised equal protection and equal benefits for all Americans. Of course, as long as they were white American men. But allowing ordinary citizens to vote, not just the wealthy, is probably what gave Andrew Jackson his overwhelming victory. Another thing he promised was to expand the democracy to the people. He didn't like the bureaucracy that the government had become, where non-elected officials carried out most jobs. He wanted to open this up. So Jackson fired many federal workers and replaced them with people who supported him. This is called the spoil system. A lot of people accuse Jackson of acting like a tyrant, but hey, the victors belong to spoils, right? You'll see that Jackson pretty much did whatever he wanted. This has been a topic of discussion in previous lessons and will continue throughout this unit. So let's review. 
Jackson lost the election of 1824 because of a quote-unquote corrupt bargain. Then, by 1828, more citizens were allowed to vote, which led to his victory. There's a lot more, but we'll go deeper into his presidency in the coming days. Now, if you found this video interesting or informative, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for Virtual History 360. Thank you.